Well, blessings and good evening, and welcome to our midweek Bible study on this Thursday night. Tonight, our topic is going to be on man's inability to govern. And if we are completely honest with ourselves, completely honest, we can see in every of governing. Man cannot do it. Cannot govern himself because man is full of this agent called evil. You would agree, right? Every last one of us has this evil inside of us, which should be an unwelcomed agent. We should not want to have it in us. We are given this at birth, unfortunately. It's inherited. And it's never completely eradicated until either death or our bodies are completely transformed into incorruptible beings. Truly looking forward to that. But right now, we're all corruptible. And this is a problem. It's a problem for us as Christians and even more so for those who do not believe in the true and living God. And because of this lack of belief in God that many people have and the lack of the adherence to his word, man alone will never be able to govern himself. Period. And God demonstrates this with the rise and fall of empires throughout history over and over again. Man alone will never be able to win because man alone cannot defeat the prince and or ruler of this world. Are you following me? And as we all know, the ruler of this world is Satan. For now. But this is his kingdom. For now. His dominion. Everything that we've seen and witnessed throughout history and up to this present day is all due to man's inability to govern. This is what we've seen. Now we're going to have to break this up into two parts. Understanding this, what I want to do is begin by looking at one verse captured in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 23, and then expound on this verse looking at what it means to man and also what it means to govern. And of course, I want to focus on the state of our country and a sign that's been given for all of us to consider. That's for tonight, Lord willing. And then part two, Lord willing, next Thursday, we will focus on the church's role and all of this, witnessing the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through all of this mess that's going on, that's been prophesied about, he foretold us about, what the Christian response is supposed to be according to the word of God, and also who is truly going to govern flawlessly. That'll be next week. I can't wait for that one. So, if you would join me, please, in the book of Jeremiah. We're going to be reading for chapter 10 and verse 23. The word of God reads, O Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. Now, for me, this is a very telling passage of Scripture. 
And it's not the only one that speaks to man in this way. There's many. And if we want to get straight to the bottom line, the bottom line is this. We are either controlled or walking directed by God or by our own evil devices. Either or. And when we take a look around the world, nation to nation, based on what's going on, we can tell who is directing those steps. You can see it. Surely, it's not God. Not at all. And even though we see it in the scriptures being prophesied about and foretold that all of this is going to be the way it is, isn't it still tough to look at? Cringeworthy. Very difficult. And you know what man does? I mean, yes, we know what man does. Man would do something like use the word good fortune. So man mistakes that good fortune that comes to him and then says, see, the reason why I did right and did good because I have good fortune from it. That's one of the motivators that guides man. Good fortune. And then there's a second piece to this. It's the emotional attachment. Very emotional. Man gets trapped up in his feelings. You would agree, right? Trapped up in them. And what does that do? that further generates these fruitless ideas that are placed in the mind of man. And all this occurs when we continue to say, I'm going to direct my steps instead of having the true and living God direct our steps. And we are told and warned in the scriptures about the outcome of this when we decide to take control. Captured in the book of Proverbs, chapter 14 and verse 12, the word of God reads the following. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. I don't think we have to interpret this. It seems right. Good fortune. I feel like I need to be doing Seems right to a man. But its end is the way of death. In the end, the way that man governs will not last. It all dies. And again, we've seen it throughout history. None of the governmental systems alone have ever proved to be timeless. All the tweaks still does not work, does not make it flawless. And when we look at the definition of govern, this is what we read. To exercise continuous sovereign authority 
over especially to control and direct the making and administration of policies in. Now, if we're looking just at the definition, oh, I guess that sounds pretty good for govern. But we have to ask ourselves a question. And the question is this, what policy and or policies are being administered in order to exercise the sovereign authority over a people? What are they? What are these policies? In other words, where's the blueprint for, for these policies? Where did you get them from? Is it man's policies derived from the thoughts of evil man? Or is it God ordained? Which one? We all know the answer to that throughout history and still today. Extremely flawed and failed systems over and over again. Still in place, tweak here, tweak there. But the reason why we're still around as it were is because of God's mercy. He's showing us what we cannot do. God is the only one who can truly govern and rule flawlessly. Wish that governments could come to this conclusion sooner. And then when we look at the various systems, what becomes abundantly clear is that they all end up modeling themselves behind the thoughts and intents of man. All of them do. They may start off, oh, look at this, this starts off godly. Doesn't take long, does it, America? And there are many different types of governmental systems in play today. We need to run through a few of them just to get an idea. We have various forms of tribalism that still exist today. You'll see some of these in Afghanistan, many of these more in Africa perhaps. There's even elements of tribalism still here in Hawaii to some degree. Still here. That's a form of a governmental system. The world has forms of totalitarianism. I can think of one big one right now, North Korea. We have forms of monarchies ruled by a single member of a royal bloodline. Still see that today. We have military dictatorships. Just look at South America. We have this one called kleptocracy. Kle 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 kleptocracy. Woohoo! Kleptocracies. I was like, kleptocracies? That's where, this is uh, where um, Vladimir Putin, um, how he rules, by the way, and I, th I just think as you clep somebody off and you keep staying off office, but I know that's not what it is. <laughs> Close enough, though. 
We have communism, or better yet, how about Marxism? It's found in China and Cuba. Forms of socialism, capitalism, that we still believe we have some elements of that in America for now. And we also have forms of republicanism and then democracies that represent half of the nations today, so to speak. And these are not all of them. But even with these and the rest of them, they've all proven to fail in the end. They all will because they are ultimately under the control of man. That's the issue. And don't think for a moment that Christians would like to have some type of theocracy that is led by man. Absolutely not. We've seen that already fail, time and time again. As long as man is at the helm of any rulership, it will fail, just a matter of time. But when the blueprint of God's word is the foundation of a system and then is followed, God will establish it and prosper it. He will do so. He will transform it and make it fruitful. And this is why America, despite how flawed her past and dark many of those days and times have been, was able to pursue becoming that more perfect union, even though it was far from perfect. But what she had was a perfect foundation that is now gone. And because of that, we are now witnessing the rise of the governmental system of anarchy. I want to make sure that everybody knows that this display of anarchy in America is being camouflaged with this Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation movement, along with, joined with Antifa, and it's not a coincidence. It's deliberate. Now, we have talked about Black Lives Matter, but we did not finish. And I need to revisit this in order for us to be on the same page. Because what the devil has done is exactly what he has always done. And that is to rely, solely rely, on the ignorance of man who he already knows is unable to govern himself and the devil uses that to push his agenda the enemy knows that once you have the emotions of individuals oh man in most cases, especially absent the fruit of the spirit, which contains the agent self-control. But once that individual has the emotions tied up in everything, oh man, it is now rage over reason. Rage will always trump reason. And once that rage is seen over the reason, the enemy clearly knows that nobody in that state of rage and emotion 
will ever look into any movement or organization at all. They'll become slaves to it. They will always follow a slogan regardless of what the movement is really about. Think about it. It will never have to be a just cause. It only has to be just a cause. Because rage is there now. There's no reason. At all. This picture you see on the screen is a shot out in Portland. Now, if you did not know, Portland has been called the whitest city in America. 71% of its occupants are white. 5.8% are black. It has one of the longest histories, believe it or not, of racism. Clan membership, and so on. But if you see this picture with white people with signs that say Black Lives Matter, and not one black person in the in the in the shot at all, because if if I'm out there and already know that I'm already doing something kind of sly, to, to fool somebody, I'm going to take the one black guy we might have and put him in the Photoshop. Call the token Negro. There is another gender working here. And I pray that we all see this. In the book of Proverbs, in chapter 14, in verse 15, the word of God reads, the simple believes every word, but the prudent considers well his steps. These are simple, well-known proverbs. In order for us to make a logical decision about anything, we have to look into things. It is written again. It's the glory of God to conceal a thing. But the glory of kings is to search out a matter. We cannot be looking at titles and catchphrases in order for us to make our decisions. How often have we heard the advice um, don't judge a book by its cover. Right? You go through school hearing that. Or maybe your mom and papa tell you. But we see a, a headline and oh man, that's it. No investigation at all. And that's even pre-rage many times. Now consider when rage hits the door. You can forget about it. There's no looking into it. I'm already 100 miles in the run. Because of the title or what the organization puts out there as a slogan. The slogan fits, so I'll commit. Let me tell you once again. 
Black Lives Matter organization are a Marxist group, a communist organization, which views goes directly against the Constitution. But more importantly, for us as Christians, their views also go against the true and living God. But if you are not prudent, okay, you'll just fall victim to the slogan. I'm following the slogan. You're following the organization. And you've become a slave to it, no matter what. Please consider this portion of what they believe that can be found on their website. As this demonic statement reads, we disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement by supporting each other as extended families and villages that collectively care for one another, especially our children, to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable. They call it a Western prescribed nuclear family structure. Um, that just so happens to be a God-ordained structure. We disrupt it, you support them, you support this. You want to go against God? Go ahead. And this is only one. And the only one we need to focus on. And please take notice, even though they mention parents in this statement here, there is no mention of fathers. Oh, and there's a reason for this. For those of you who do not know, the founders of Black Lives Matter are three females each of them lesbians. And one of them actually married, based on the worldview, to another woman. Are we connecting the dots? Did you hear about since 2015, George Soros has donated $33 million to the organization. And thousands of other CEOs have rallied, donating millions, as well as professional athletes, movie stars, etc. And get this, 71% of the money that is raised is managed by the Black Lives Matter Network. 71% of the money goes through the hands of the leadership. And as suspected, that would come. This next issue is not a surprise. This is what the devil does. And this is how he works. Because now we have this visible alliance between Black Lives Matter and the LGBTQ plus community and movement. Pictured here is a flag for the BLM and LGBTQ plus communities 
and it's flying over several Capitol buildings across America today. Now, we should not be surprised about this. And you know, you know my heart on this. Uh, um, the flag is ugly. It's a train wreck in my opinion. But this is what we have. In fact, Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 21. The word of God reads this. Though they join forces, the wicked will not go unpunished, but the prosperity of the righteous will be delivered. And do not think for one moment that I'm not bothered in the way such as having feelings for those who have fallen victim to all these movements. Because like many of you, we at least have one or maybe a, a member of our family in one of these organizations, movements, or live this lifestyle, or perhaps both, like I do, both and all. But I, I love them enough to come at them this way. And I love my Jesus enough to do his will. Those who say absolutely nothing, do you really love them? And I'm not talking about yelling and screaming. I'm talking about, do you sit them down? If able to, if able to have a conversation, do you ever just express this at all? But what we're witnessing is wickedness. Each of these movements goes against God. And please remember, BLM organization is a Marxist group. They use threats and intimidation to undermine the government. And actually, it could rise to the level of being called domestic terrorist. But since our foundation of truth has been eroded, you will never see any real pushback against lawlessness. I don't believe we'll see it again. Because one of the byproducts of removing the truth is that it ultimately makes our leadership weak. Have you noticed that? You take that away and they're weak. And again, this country was built on Judeo-Christian values. That's what made it strong. Not perfect, but strong. And every other nation who is after us recognizes it. And now with it gone, we have an overabundance of weakness throughout our nation. Just weak. And it's sad. It's sick. It's as sick as me to see it. We talked about this before. But once again, I just want to read it. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 3, in verse 12. The word of God reads, As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, those who lead you cause you to err and destroy the way of your paths. Now, please understand, this has very little to do with a woman being in a leadership role. 
but everything to do with the weakness of leadership. Everything to do with it. Weak, weak, weak. And I'm not talking about leadership role in the church, by the way. That's another topic. Weak. Also speaks about the young people. Not just young people per se, but also those who are young-minded. Becoming the oppressors. What do we see in the streets today? Wouldn't you agree? Oppressors. This is what happens absent truth. And that truth can only be completely found in the true and living God. Period. And with our foundation removed, we will be governed by weak ignorance. Are we not seeing it? We will be oppressed by mere babies, having no experience in life. And this is how you can tell who they are. They will be completely ungodly, foul-mouthed, driven solely by emotions, and they will oppose any reasonable discussion. You follow me, right? But what's sad is that people still follow them and vote for them. It's beyond me. You know, every time I talk about the government as far as failing us and whatnot, you get in conversations with people, there's always one, always one without fail. It's like this. Well, you know what? If it's so big, why don't you run? Why don't you run for office? Why don't you make the change? I let them go on and on and on. And finally, when they're out of breath, I just simply say to them, there is no way that I would take a demotion Why would I? I have not been called to run for office. The Lord called me to be an assistant pastor. Why would I take a demotion by being the mayor, governor, or even the president? And to that, they're just as quiet as you guys. <laughs> Silent. Now, before we go on to Antifa, we've got to get moving. I want to look at this, um, what this whole movement from BLM has actually done. You know what? I have to agree that with the recent events that it does expose racism, but not in the way that you think. <laughs> I know you're feeling me on this. It's exposing it. But because racism has been uh, redefined as a white man's problem, people only see, you know, uh, the white people being exposed, right? But the truth of the matter is, is that peoples of all backgrounds, especially black, who are being exposed about how they truly feel. Many people, such as actors, Right, look, and you'll see. That's how they truly feel. So it's bringing it up. And that's okay. And to me, those who are white and are not willing to bow down to this movement are not the racist. If anything, it's the ones who feel obligated to cater to the demands of this movement. Those are 
those are the ones, if at all. Because there's some level of guilt there. Think about it. I understand that some may do it out of fear. Okay. But I believe most are doing it out of guilt. Because there is no way that I am going to be kissing somebody's boot to show allegiance for something I had nothing to do with. That's nuts. We've seen this before, and it seems like we're going down this path again. But there is a bigger agenda behind it all. And this network and movement is just a small piece of the puzzle that's being used to put together this agenda. And once again, all my black people are being used as an instrument in this orchestra. And it makes sense. I would use, I would use black people too. Absolutely. Because the level of disdain has already been put in the brains against whites. Easier to manipulate. And we see that today. So now we have the so-called oppressed now becoming more hateful than the so-called oppressor. And that's the whole goal. Rage over reason. And then all of those people who want to try to conversate with them. Have you ever tried to have a conversation? Hey, let's sit down and no, I'm talk to you. I just want to talk about how do you, what do you get to this conclusion at? You don't know, I can't show you. If you don't understand, that's your problem. Sadly, when there's only anger, the enemy is right there. Right there. And he's been there from the beginning. And it's not a problem with being angry. The problem comes when we allow it to have dominion over us. And that's a Christian view, of course. And the world is void of that understanding. Nevertheless, captured in the book of Ephesians in chapter 4 verses 26 through 27, the word of God reads, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Verse 20, here's why. Nor give place to the devil. Staying in a state of wrath and anger, no matter how justified that it might be, the devil and or his minions will have an open door to our thoughts. And once that happens, typically it controls our actions. And rageful actions are never good. Never good. Now, we have time to quickly look at Antifa. We're going to paint this picture. That's we, it's, it's being sold to us. Trying, they're trying to sell it. Preferably it's not working for the saints. But many people it is working for. And it's impacting the way we see our governance in America. So Antifa stands for anti-fascism. <laughs> All right, you already know. The joke's up, right? <laughs> it's supposed to mean this, though. They are against any form of far-right authoritarian um, altered nationalism characterized by dictatorial power, forcible suppression of opposition, as well as 
strong regimentation of societal and of the economy. That's what it's supposed to mean. And they do show up to alt-right and KKK rallies. Seen that a few times. Charlottesville was one of them, if you remember. But they say they're against racism and they're extremely progressive, the group itself, not the definition of anti-fascism. But the problem is, in order to be against fascism, how is it possible that they apply forcible suppression to everybody else? Not just the far right either. Any conservative group, period. These are the same group of people that intimidate and disrupt conservative speakers on college campuses and elsewhere. That's who these cats are. And they clearly use violence. And guess what? They are Marxist as well. Are we connecting the dots? And because we as America no longer have the ability to govern with the foundation of truth, opposing groups like this Oh, they become overly problematic. But this is what happens when we have weak leadership and then we have leaders trying to appease them. Have you seen it? They'll go out there and say, hey, I'll do anything you want, almost kind of, sort of. You don't understand. It's either everything for them or you're the enemy. Here's my list of demands. I met 1,126 of your 1,127. Not good enough. All my demands or we're coming after you. No matter how much you try to appease them, they're going to turn on you in the end. Period. Slaves to a movement. No matter where it goes, you either join them or, guess what, you're an enemy. Again, all these movements go against the true living God. Far left, far right, those in the middle, fancy slogans and all the other things and whatnot. Doesn't matter. Look into them and you'll see. They're problematic. And they're all meant to cause division. That's the design. And you know, our leadership really helped it out. They continue to, and it's sad. Even though I believe that we were given a clear sign almost three years ago. Do you remember this? The 21st of August in 2017. This is the track of the great total eclipse that would pass across our country, dividing it. For me, this ended any and all resolve that we could have. Not to mention the fact that we continue to foster a plan to divide Jerusalem. How do I get there with this? Because in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14, the word of God says, Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And wouldn't you agree, since this time and perhaps even before that, division in this nation has only gotten worse. And sadly, I believe it's only going to get worse across the board. And we're told by the Savior himself in the book of Matthew, chapter 12, 
12 and verse 25. The word of God reads, but Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself will not stand. Please take notice. He does not say every kingdom, city, or or house except in America. And when you look at the word house, of course it means our homes, but what about our house of representatives? Think about it. Completely divided. All of this stems from the removal of foundational truths. This is not about about some act of injustice. That's not it. That's just a banner to hook people because the devil's in the details. There's not one area in our lives that you can see in society that we're not divided or growing more divisive included in the church, which Lord willing, next week we're going to discuss. But how or why do we expect anything to change? When we as a people continue to be governed by our own individual thoughts that are not anchored in godly wisdom. We continue to witness man doing everything that is right in his own eyes. And what about this so-called new movement known as cancel culture? They think that removing aspects of history, that's what they're doing, they think they are, but really they're actually reenacting history itself, as well as setting the stage for their future ruler to come. That's what they're doing. Take down all the statues, don't worry. Leave the platforms up though. They'll become useful for you. The Bible tells us there's nothing new under the sun. This is just another mechanism used by the enemy in order to legitimize lawlessness. That's what it is. People are running around thinking they're doing a righteous gesture, all in the name of justice. And we see this spreading throughout the world now in nearly every capitalist governed nation. Very important to understand that. And you know what? There's one thing that the greatest ones who are in greatest distress have in common. You know what that is? And or was a deep root of Christianity. Do you see where this is going? These movements are dark, principality led. And this movement to defund the police is a major part of this aim to achieve lawlessness. And there's one thing about lawlessness. It transcends all humanistic makeups, all of them. In other words, there's no color in lawlessness. There's no class in lawlessness, rich or poor, it doesn't matter. Lawlessness is lawlessness. No age in lawlessness. No gender in lawlessness. But lawlessness itself is associated with the devil.
Now, some would argue that this defunding the police is merely a mechanism that will allow for money to be diverted to additional social programs that will provide a greater benefit, end quote. And my response is simple. That's been a major problem in the first place. Social exploit of these social pro programs. It's an issue. It would, we would have to go through this line by line on that piece. We don't have time for that, obvious. But you get the point. But we already see what's happening in our country today without this defund actually being implemented to its fullness. Chaos is what's happening. And it's being championed. The book of Matthew, in chapter 24, and verse 12, the word of God says, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Timeless passage to me. How many of us are witnessing those we know who really cleave to one or two or three of these groups, movements, or whatever? Love grow cold as lawlessness increases. And they really think that they're on the positive side of all of this. Have you heard it? I mean, nearly every major sports event, clothing line, you name it. They're all attached to these movements somehow. All of them are. And they say they want to be on the right side of history. You ever heard that term? I want to be on the right side of history. Never considering that they are ushering in the darkness of hell. All for the right side. To feel like a part of a movement that is positive. But it's a lie. But once you evict the truth, someone has to take up residence. And it doesn't matter. Once truth is gone, everyone that takes up residence is a cousin of lies. Doesn't matter. I want to end this portion of the study tonight in the book of Psalms. Chapter 11, verses 1 through 3. And the word of God reads, In the Lord, I put my trust. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? Verse 2, for look, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow on the string that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. And verse 3, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Oh. So what do we do, Pastor? Do we do nothing? Do we run out in the street and evangelize, throwing Bibles at everyone? Do we run for office? Do we try to save the world? Or are we told to save souls? What do the righteous do? And what should all of us do? All of us trust in the Lord, yet we live in a land of failed governance. So next week, Lord willing, we're going to talk about the church and our homes, prayerfully answer these questions via the word of God as always, and then to witness what will happen in the end when the true and living God steps foot on this 
earth and reclaims his government. Why don't we stand so we can pray? Loving Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for your word. It speaks clearly to us, and it comforts us. And we thank you for your truths. I pray that we would all live according to your truths, despite the direction that the world is going, family is going, and anyone who would turn us away from you. Help us always keep our eyes fixed on you and our trust in you. Use us mightily in these last days and strengthen us, encourage us, and keep us for you. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you in the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus, the Christ we pray. Amen.